So hi everyone. Uh, in this video we're going to take a look at story mode in Motion Builder and uh, look at how we can combine uh, animations into one specific animation. We can also even retarget animation quickly if we have an already characterized character in Motion Builder here. So um, the story mode is in the navigator panel here and to work with story mode you need to have a characterized character inside of your scene. Uh, in the previous scenes we were working with Agor uh, which was from the tutorial assets in Motion Builder. You could work with your character if you would like. Um, but for this example I'm just going to show you guys that you can use a completely different character and work with those animations that we've been working with. So I'm going to grab uh, Mia rigged here and drag her into the scene with no animation. You can use whichever character you like for this step in particular. Um, and uh, she's already characterized, so you would need to have a character that you would go through the characterization process uh, to be able to work with this story mode that we're going to work with here. So inside of story mode, there's two different um, levels. There's this shot track and then there's the character track. The shot track is specifically for cameras. So if you're setting up cameras in your scene and rendering, uh, which is something we're going to take a look at in Motion Builder because you can actually com composite your entire animated scene in here and render it out. Um, you can um, do, set up your camera shots in here to be able to get your different camera views and so forth. Uh, the bottom track though is reserved for being able to edit um, actual character animation. So to create a uh, character track inside of the story mode you right click and go to insert and then character animation track. So we'll add in a character animation track and you can see it's signified by a little character here and there's a whole bunch of other features here to mute, um, turn off visibility, lock it, key things, and so forth. So if you have a character imported into your scene, if you click on this little drop down here, it should show up inside of here if it was characterized properly. So I'm going to select Mia. Okay. And then in this timeline here is where we can start to bring in some animations. Now um, I'm going to go to my um, folder here, my uh, week 5 folder that I have created and in the previous videos we created this um, hop plotted and climb plot and what we're going to do is we're going to blend these together into one animation that we can then import into a game engine and it'll act as if they were you know all recorded all done at the same time um, and there won't be any hiccups or breaks inside of the animation either. Uh, so this is a really handled, handy tool for being able to combine animations together and make the entire movement of your character seem seamless. So um, I'm going to start off with the hot plotted since that was the first one and I'm going to drag and drop it right into the timeline here. And uh, this character had no animation on her before but now she does. Okay so it immediately recharacterized the data which by the way was um, the Agor model. So what it's doing is it's just reading the skeletal transforms from Agor onto this character. Okay, so um, it's retargeted that animation um, instantly. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to want to do is drag in the other clip that we want to blend this with. So I'm going to grab the climb plot here and bring that into the scene. And uh, as you can see, the um, the timeline's a little bit small, so I'm just going to click and drag on the little magnifying glass icon here and drag this over so I can see both clips side by side. And when you select them, they highlight green, and you can move them around by clicking and dragging and sliding them. You can even make them overlap one another, and we'll talk about that to cross blend them together from there. But right now, we're just going to butt one animation on top of the other. So uh, I'm going to advance the playhead to where we transition from one to the other and hit play. <clears throat> oh, actually, it um, it went right back to the beginning. And that's because our timeline is set to only 300 frames. So uh, if I go out here to the final frame, it looks like it's somewhere around 3,557. So what I'll do is on my end frame here, there's my start frame and then my end frame on the timeline. Timeline. I'll click in here and change this to 3,557. Hit enter, and that'll give me the entire timeline here. All right, so 
Now if I go to where that transition takes place, you'll see she just kind of teleports over <clears throat> to the other position and starts the other animation. And what we want to do is we want to create a seamless transition from one animation to the other. Now one way you could do this is by dragging these together. And what ends up happening is she slides into the position of the other animation. Which kind of does the trick, but it's not perfect. Okay, it's not perfect. What we want to do is we want to match these together. Okay, so I've got the climb portion, which is the second clip selected. And there are features here inside of the story editor for us to be able to match up that movement. So I'm going to just drag this out a little bit here. And you'll see there's an option for match here. So if I go to match, there's a button right next to it, which it looks like two puzzle pieces. Those are the match options. So I'm going to select those. And it's going to say um, match. Oh, whoops, I forgot something here. Uh, what we're going to need is a control rig on Mia. So let's um, let's back it up a bit here. I'm going to shut off the um, the uh, story mode by clicking on none here. So that's going to put Mia back into her original pose. And if you scrub through the timeline, right, she's not going to do anything. Okay, and that's because we've shut off the um, the features here. What we need is a control rig. I totally forgot about that. So, um, oh, she does have a, a source control rig on her already. She does. All right. So never mind. I I was I was wrong. I just wasn't seeing it. So if I hit Control A a few times, I should be able to see the control rig from there. And you want to pick a limb or a particular portion that you want to match the animation to. So. Um, in this particular case, I think I'm going to grab one of her ankles. So I'm going to use this um, right ankle here. And that right ankle, when I have that selected and we use the match properties here, it's going to match it based off of the object that we have selected. So it should help to make this pretty seamless. All right, so now what I'll do is I'll go back down to my story mode and select Mia again. You can see that I've got the ankle still currently selected. If I go back over to where the transition takes place, just want to show you that. Um, she's still jumping from that position to that position when they change frames. All right, so I've got climb plot selected. <clears throat> if I select the match and then you want the match options, which it's like, looks like these two little puzzle pieces here, and it's going to ask you <clears throat> how you want to match these up together. So in this particular case, I have the second clip, so I want to match it to the previous clip, which is hop, right, the hop plotted. And it's going to ask me where I want to match it. So match time is going to say at the start of the selected clip. So the one I have selected is plot, and that's where I want it to match at the start of the selected clip. So depending on which one you have selected, um, you're going to have to make a decision as to how you want to match them together. So I'm going to hit OK. And what should happen now is she should turn, right? and then start doing her thing. And it's simple as that. So if I hit the play button here, um, it's almost seamless. And then that's where the, you can see there's a little bit of a jolt that happens there. And that's where um, dragging and dropping the clips on top of one another will help to blend that together. So if I take this climb plot and drag it so that they overlap a little bit, it will transition from one animation to another. And if we uh, take a quick look here, you should be able to see these little crossing patterns that are taking place, right? And uh, from here, you can change how they interact from there as well by clicking and dragging those out. But what should happen now is we should get a pretty seamless transition. So I'm going to go to just before the transition takes place. Hit play. She even, oh man, I went a little too far. She kind of hops into the final position even. Play it one more time. Yeah, she hops into the final, final position. So I need to drag these out away from another, uh, another a little bit more. And there we go. So now that these animations are combined together, I can um, 
plot them to the current tape to the control rig. I can edit them uh, now that they're on the control rig and um, be able to treat them as if they're one animation. All right, so the next step to this would be plotting it. So in this phase, I would probably save this out typically um, so that I could um, go back and edit it if I need to later. Maybe I get to a certain point where I'm like, oh, maybe I really want these to be further apart. Um, once you plot to the control rig, you can't really get back to this story mode very easily. So it's nice to kind of have it already in the state if you need to come back to it. So typically in my workflow, I would probably save this out um, and then plot it. But I'm just going to plot it here. So to plot it, you right click um, the, um, the timeline here. And uh, what you do is plot whole scene to current take. And it's going to ask you how you want to plot it. I'm going to leave the um, features the same. I hit plot. And so let it do its thing here. And it looks like it's plotted. So now that it's plotted, um, we should be able to um, remove the character reference here. And if I hit play, she should still do the animation just as if it was all plotted to the main timeline. So I can delete the entire character track out of the story mode and she does the animation the way she's supposed to. And uh, because it's plotted to a control rig, I can stop this at any time, um, select a specific arm and be able to edit it and key it on a different animation la layer here. So I can change the animation to be however I would like it to be. Pretty powerful stuff. So you can record your different takes and if you like a particular version of one take and you want to splice it from another, you can splice it from another. There's all sorts of tools here to be able to cut um, you see there's a razor blade feature, there's also a cut feature, copy, paste. And you actually cut up those different tracks that are in the story mode and splice them together however you like and reorder them and make them do whatever you need to do for whatever task you're trying to accomplish um, in your animation. So the final aspect of this would be plotting it down to the skeleton so that um, we can bring it into our game engine, which we're going to do in the next video. So I'm going to plot this down. I'm going to go to plot to skeleton. I'm going to click on the options and it's going to ask me how I want to plot it. I'll hit plot. And that should get rid of the control rig. Um, it's still there if you need to return back to it, uh, but now it's completely plotted to the skeleton and this thing, if I save it out, I can bring it into Unity or Unreal or Maya or 3ds Max or whatever other content creation tool I need to work with. So I'm going to save this out, I'm going to save as, and I'm going to call it Mia underscore blend animation underscore plot and uh, hit save. And it's going to say the file already exists because I had it from before. And I'll just save it. All right. So in the next video, we'll take a look at utilizing these, uh, this animation inside of the game engine.